a sight we have waited almost fifty years for, as rare today as the billowing sails of a Placentia Bay schooner. Hector and Grace Dick's home is preparing for repatriation, not to Harbour Buffet, where they lived in the 1960s, but to Spencer's Cove. The house has spent the last 50 years on Tax Beach Place, a home for Alex Smith, the first headmaster of the new St Michael's School, and lastly Roy Abbott. A plan is hatched in the months before the 50th anniversary of resettlement to return it to the islands, where it can enjoy its days as a recreation centre to the families at Spencer's Cove. It's doubtful the house will object, freed at last. Old skills come back into play. Long poles push through under the length of the house and more poles beneath them allow the house to slide. Grease is applied to ease movement and securing bolts tighten between the floor and longitudinal poles. Kevin Wareham and Ken Peach remember how it was. They did it back in the 60s. There's not too much work today getting it ready because today you got machinery to do the work but back 50 years ago it was all manual labor jacks and trying to get all, all the, the poles and that in place and under right to to carry the house here you got a jack here right to keep the, the end up to to take it out over so what we got done here today we uh we put the these sticks under we can make a cradle and then we got more sticks across underneath them right and we so right now the house is sitting on the on the sticks that run across mm -hmm. so we'll just hopefully just pull it right off just to, just drag it off drag it off right? what's the purpose of having these these big poles across we the back yeah to, to to create a cradle for the house to, sit the house to sit on so the house won't be the sticks will not be hauled out from in under the okay. stick, this big stick will go to keep the the other six is going ahead, right? If, if the bolts don't hold in place, they'll just come up by the back of the house and, and hold it in place. Right. right. And of course, what you're doing today, although you're doing it with machinery, it, it, 50 years ago, you'd have been using blocks and tackle and, and a lot more man, manpower. Right the they would have, yeah. And you also use the bolt on the fall of the table to pull mm -hmm. the... They use the bolt a lot to pull uh -huh. the... When they could, right? To yeah. pull the, mm -hmm. the house rather than main, right? Did, did they... Did, did bulldozers go over there much to do any hauling? No. No. Later, when the government got into it, they, the government had a barge that they had brought up after, and they, they had a bulldozer on the barge, but that was later in the lot of places. Right. Moved it. Was it quite um, quite a, a task getting them, dragging them up here? Because this was just mud and muck. Mud, mud yeah. <laughs> but what did you use, a bulldozer? Bulldozer, old bulldozer, that's all we had, yeah. On the islands, homes were built on concrete posts. They did not have basements, but the moving principle is the same and sticks to roll on are laid out. The new road is protected, although Kevin Wareham is still worried his machine will destroy it. With his deft control and no doubt an affectionate nod, the house relinquishes his grip and moves steadily off its base. It's free to start the journey to the barge. If the plan is right. They have succeeded in the first hurdle, and it becomes a process of moving forward stage by stage, moving poles ahead with the machine. Back in the 60s, this had to be done by manual labor over much tougher terrain. The move is going well so far, but Wilfred Best is concerned. Anything can happen as this eight-ton home moves down the incline. Keeping it greased is one thing, too much could be a disaster. The machine makes it look like a one-man show, but it's the best's party. Wilfred, son Scott, Trevor Hoskins and his brother Jeremy all help with operations. As Trevor says, the younger generation are the grunts today. Okay. 
As the house approaches the road, a braking system is employed. Fifty years ago, it would have been a block and tackle. There's anxiety today, and it becomes necessary to drag the home onto the road once the muddy track. And then the home lurches into the grass, possibly caused by rough-cut telegraph poles. Imagine what they had to work with 50 years ago. But today, mechanical power quickly corrects the direction. This plan to return home to the islands is a courageous one, both from a practical aspect and one of sensitivity. What does the old shell feel as it is hauled in the opposite direction? It surely has feelings and memories. And what would it like to say? And perhaps by now it's thinking of nothing other than escape. But wondering too if the Spencer Cove crowd will be as congenial as the Harbour Buffets. I think it will be a pleasant return and no plans to over-utilise you. No heating systems and electric cables. We want you to embrace and harmonise our group. Here at the launching off point, the bank is trimmed before the house is brought close to the edge. Once it is in position, the gravel can be built up to form a vertical bank Fifty years ago, Kevin Wareham used his old bulldozer. This is the end of the first phase. At high tide, the pontoon will be floated in, and on the next low tide, the house will be hauled aboard. It's full credit to this group, who really do want to keep their island history alive, and to Kevin for getting the home this far, although he cannot remember bringing it ashore fifty years ago. Was it a mirror, mirror image operation of 50 pretty, years ago? It was pretty good, yeah. yeah. But uh, do, 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 most times. Doing, doing it in reverse, did that give you more concerns? <laughs> no, not really. No. <laughs> but pull, I mean, pulling, when you pull them off onto the, onto the land, yeah. I mean, you did exactly the same thing. You built, a, built a ramp yeah. and then just it's pulled reverse, it. Yeah. But how did you pull them off? They're all dozer. Dozer, yeah. <laughs> First few, I mean, that little John there tracks with the winch on, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, two old, two old doors were hooked together and with a winch on the back of them, right? And that wasn't powerful enough, so they made to get a bigger one, right? Yeah. Was it, was it, and was this a sort of a, a fairly typical size house? I mean, I know some of them were two stories, but with, yeah. in actual dimension, is that pretty much yeah, some, average? Yeah. yeah, that's average pretty well. The two story, them old two story box houses were easier to haul than that. Were they? Yeah. They were, they were stronger, dude. They couldn't break them up. No. They were stronger. Yes, the old old box house, house yeah. the old soft box house. I, I remember Cease telling me how occasionally the, um, yeah, they got it slightly wrong. The back of the house would be flapping away. Oh yeah, yeah. we back to her back at her once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get sued? No, back then, no, no one done that, something like that to you. <laughs> no. Uh, well, you took the chances then. Took the chance. Nobody thought about doing anything like that. You do what you could to help someone, that was it. I mean, that's how it was. Although they were paying, it was still help, wasn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you, you must have seen some fairly tearful sights. I mean, some very upset people. Oh, I did. Yes, not every day. Yeah. It was a big upset in people's lives. Like, very big upset in people's lives. have to do like right? And that's all they had was the house. Yeah, that was their, their whole, their whole, their whole, their whole, their whole value. Yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. Do the house, right? See that destroyed or something, the back farm, it wouldn't be very nice, I guess, for mm. <laughs> feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just time for a quick reflection on where it stood for 50 years.
The following morning, Wilfred Best is there early, organising. The crowd and the team gathers. A few poles are laid in the new bank for the home to roll onto the pontoon. Again, this is a moment when matters could go wrong, a collapse of the bank or a sideways slip. There's a place that I have known of Since my childhood, my father's home I long to be there to roam and wander Beaches up in the old cove Where the beautiful maples still stand there Silhouettes in the setting sun Come back to life Bring it forever is gone And my father told me stories Of a lifestyle that we'll never know Where the first generation sent centralization Just to visit then we had her back home In the fifties the place did prosper But now only memories remain Of the time when the government paid an allowance Move and start over again Into Arnold's Cove many did settle Yet further still others did go To start a new life it took all their might but their heart stayed up in the old cold And my father told me stories Of a lifestyle that we'll never know Where the first generation sent centralization Just to visit then we had her back home So many years have passed by now Since her family said farewell that day And the lives that they knew Just faded from view and Disappeared like our wake on the bay It's those times forever they're gone by And there's many the young folk they say How we can't help but wonder How our lives would be different if her parents had not moved away And my father told me stories Of a lifestyle that we'll never know Where the first generation sent centralization Just to visit then we had her back home And my father told me stories Of a lifestyle that we'll never know and centralization Just to visit Then we had her back home have it. Simple. When you know what you're doing. Trevor, yesterday was a bloody good success. Uh, talk, talk me through some of the, the planning that went into this. The, the original planning happened uh, months ago. When we started cutting this place out right down, took all the jib rock out and a lot of trips to the dump. But uh, but yesterday it really all came together yesterday when we we got her off the foundation and she came off came off pretty good. I mean, a, a good operation in reverse. I mean, you 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 weren't uh, even born thought about Not fifty even years ago. Thought about. So um, who who was who was in a sense the brains behind this? Who had the expertise? It was a combination of a lot of people. I would say, well, Kevin, can't thank Kevin enough because he had the machinery and stuff, and, and he done it. But uh, 
and Uncle Welford, Welford Best, and Kenneth and Scott. Me and Scott put a lot of the the grunt work into it, but uh, uh, I wouldn't want to forget anyone. But there was a bunch of people. Uh, my father, my brother. It was, it was just a whole family effort to get this up Spencer's Call for for a community center. Yes, just tell me what 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 is the purpose of moving a building? I guess it's about thirty feet by twenty seven feet. Yeah, it's about there, thirty by twenty eight, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, the purpose is for a community center when we get it up to get it up the bay for functions. We we do a lot of different things up at Spencer's School. We do uh, uh, just this past about three weeks ago we had Christmas up there, and and it was about sixty to seventy people up at Spencer's School that weekend, and I the twenty odd kids I guess it was something like that with Santa Claus and just functions like that instead of keeping it all in one cabin. Usually we do things in our middle, and that's where we we hold all of our all of our big functions, but. Uh, if it rains, we got to go to cabins and keep them. If we're a party, I don't want to say that, but if we we're a party and or something like that, we uh, keeping people up in their cabins or or whatever. So this is just a place that the whole community can go and you know we haven't got to worry about keeping people up. People can go back to their own cabins and it's just a place to meet. Yeah. And it's all about the. I, I'd be uh, if I didn't mention Nan Peach because Nan is the the reason for it all. I said we should. Uh, Call this the Lizzie Rec Center. <laughs> it was a success for uh, well stuff that I wouldn't have ever thought of. But obviously Kevin knowing how to do it. He uh, with the sticks, the the poles, and and where he had them placed too, and how she came off. I mean, she came off flawlessly. Oh, we we broke one floorboard, and uh, but we we had her all bolted down to the to the floor in different places, and from from every every step went went perfectly. Yeah, it was really good. Did you do you think it was a it was a textbook story? I mean, do, as far as you understand from what Kevin suggested and uh, others who of that generation, do you think you followed it to the T with what was required? Uh, compared to what they done sixty years ago, or sorry, fifty years compared to what they done fifty years ago, I would uh, other than excavator, I'd imagine as much it was much the same, the same scenario went went much the same way. A lot easier on the back with the excavator, I'd imagine. Them, yeah. them men certainly worked for what they done. I guarantee you. Yeah, yeah. it's all pulleys and um, yeah. turfers and, and yeah, boats. Brute force niggers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were they were men. And of course, you got the hard work ahead of you once you get it over there, haven't you? Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun too when we get it up there. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. We're hoping to get maybe some machinery to not not uh, excavator machinery or anything like that, but maybe some certain kind of a puller or tugger turf or something like that that will help us out a bit yeah mm -hmm. luckily where she got to go to when we get to Spencer's Cove is uh she only got to go about the length of the building where we're putting her to right now so gosh so you you where it's going to go although it's going to be very low it's obviously quite protected weather wise uh yeah yeah well actually there is one wind that'll probably hurt it but we'll we'll figure something out from there yeah that same evening Thursday 21st of July Fearful of a change in the weather, the home is floated out, witnessed by a small crowd. The majority had never seen such a sight in their lives. Good. I missed the launch. <laughs> Did it come away easily? It was floating. It was floating, was it? Right. Anxious about the deteriorating weather, the house is floated round into Arnold's Cove. The two-hour trip was not without its excitement. As for the journey across to Spencer's Cove, well, that really does require a very special day. Fifty years on, they're not going to lose this one.
The house is floating high. Sometimes homes on barges were one or two feet underwater by the time they crossed the bay. There's a small welcoming party at Arnold's Cove, mainly the mooring crew and friends. The house will remain aboard the pontoon for the next 10 days here for visitors to see before the journey to Spencer's Cove on the northwestern side of Long Island. Across the bay at Spencer's Cove, they're preparing for the arrival of their new rec centre with a feast of salt cod. The traditional life prevails. On Monday the 1st of August, the small flotilla sets off from Arnold's Cove. Towboats, escort and telegraph poles follow behind the home. It's a smooth crossing to the top of Long Island and down the western side of Spencer's Cave. And vacate our homes. Centralization forever would alter the lives of our neighbours and also our own. Now it's many years later Times they are changing Deep in our hearts Forever we'll yearn For Placentia Bay In all of its splendor Waiting for us Someday to return When the day finally came To leave our homestead we were resettled without any delay We made our new homes in various places But dreamed of the old ones in Placentia Bay And it's many years later Times they are changing Deep in our hearts Forever we'll yearn For Placentia Bay Splendor waiting for us someday to return. Well, time don't go backward, it keeps moving forward. We must move with it, give life our best. We'll take your children to visit the islands, share our fond memories as we reminisce. Now it's been Later, our children remind us they do not consider the islands their homes. Home was their parents and also their memories, and they only know it by what they've been told. As it's many years later, times they are changing deep in our hearts forever. In all of its splendor, waiting for us someday to Children are growing and soon will be leaving The homes of their childhood for lives of their own Centralization caused wounds that are healing And maybe someday the pain will be gone Now it's many years later 
times they are changing, for deep in our hearts forever will yearn for the Sanchebe in all of its splendor, waiting for us someday to return. Now it's fifty years later, times they are changing, deep in our hearts forever will yearn. And Chibay in all of its splendor Waiting for us someday to return By mid-morning they have broken the back of the shift. They demonstrate that the old methods, with a few modern touches, can still work, and they were emboldened to suggest that perhaps they could start a new business in returns to the islands. One hopes this project will reward the families here at the beaches for many years to come. Returned it surely is. Last night we had a problem there, but uh, we had to give up because of darkness. But this morning, when we started this morning, everything started to work together and it uh, started to come along really good. <laughs> but uh, bring her up the other day, uh, we left us nice and calm when we left, but we got the forecast, which calm for a lot of wind. <laughs> We're a bit nervous, don't want her across, but uh, we didn't get the wind, it was calm all day. Lucky for us. <laughs> we got her here. But that house was built in, in Harbour Buffett. A fellow by the name of Hector Dix owned the house. And uh, Freeman Ware bought it and he brought it into our own school and he hauled it up, sat it up at the teacher's residence. And uh, from there I think it was after three or four families lived in it after that. But then when uh, Kevin wanted to get rid of it, he talked to Scott about it and Scott said it'd be a nice thing to have up the bay. So it started from there. We stripped her out inside there uh, earlier in the year and uh, and then, well, everybody will see the video, I guess, when we start hauling her off <laughs> and get her down on the float. And now she's up here. I suppose she'll stay there now for the fall, or for the summer anyway. Maybe the fall will start up work at it again, but uh, we only got a month left now in summer. <laughs> Summer's gone, yeah. so we don't want to spend it at that. But uh, it was good. It was a good move. Never had too much trouble. <laughs>